friends, we now invite you to join us for the Animation Academy. Please welcome your sketch artist, Ron Cohey. Hi. How are you guys doing today? Brave in the weather? Awesome. Well, my name's Ron, and I hope you're enjoying Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary. This is so awesome. And also Epcot's Festival of the Arts. A lot of really great talented artists everywhere around here. And after this, I'm going to go over and say hi to some of them because I haven't seen them in a while. It's great. So, like I'm saying, my name is Ron, and I've been working with Disney for, well, I started about 28 years ago. So, in a nutshell, I've worked on 14 different films, 10 with uh, the theatrical Disney films, starting from Pocahontas and going through Princess and the Frog as an assistant animator, which we called Clean Up, also as an animator um, and a storyboard artist. And then currently I have a character art, character art manager uh, with Theme Park Merchandise as well, and this is for the global parks around the world. So it's so much fun to do stuff that will also be in Shanghai or uh, sometimes Paris or, you know, obviously right here and at my home park, which is Disneyland, California. Um, and along the way, I've also worked on over 60 children's books. And I brought one of them to show you today because I love working with Pixar. And um, one of the characters that I love drawing, two of the characters, <laughs> I love the Cars characters. Anybody here Cars fans? Woo! All right. Now they are tricky to draw, so I'm going to take it nice and slow, step by step. But they're a lot of fun, they have a lot of personality. Something that you didn't think could have personality, a big metal object. But Pixar, the artists there are geniuses, and they came up with brilliant ways of getting these cars to squash and stretch and move believably. And I'll explain that. This is one of the books I got to work on. I don't know if it's up yet. Anyway, it's called The Spooky Sound. I don't know if anybody's seen this one. It came out a while back, but Mater and McQueen are obviously in Radiator Springs. Oh, here we go. There it is. Anyway, that was a lot of fun to work on. And I also got to work with Walt Disney Imagineering over the years. In fact, some of the buses, you might have seen some of the buses that I worked on today. So there's, there is a Lightning McQueen bus that drives around. I did that one, as well as uh, nine other ones. I also did... Oh wait, no, a total of 13 buses. 10 uh, Skyliner gondolas I did the wraps for, and a lot of the Art of Animation Resort, including the car section. So that's why I am a little excited to get to show you how to draw these cars characters. They're so much fun. Let me just take this thing up here for me, myself. Now, what I like to do is figure out easy ways to draw these characters, because sometimes there are bit tricky. As long as you remember, they're all based on shapes, very simple shapes. So what I'm going to do is start with red. I know everybody has a black pencil and that's cool, so I also have a black graphite pencil. But just to show you to start very lightly with shapes so that you get these blocked in first. What we're going to do is, uh, let's see, think of like a, a rectangle. But this is going to be, you know, a fun, flat, fast, sleek car. So it's kind of a curved line rectangle going off into space. So it's more of a cube. Okay, everybody got that? It's kind of a block. Now, three quarters of the way over, Bring a line down like that, showing the front edge of that block. And then this line here will kind of go up at an angle. And this one here will kind of curve back in like that. Now, about here, a third of the way down, we're going to draw another line, cutting across the whole thing like this. And then I'm looking at a drawing I did this morning, just to kind of guide myself as far as these construction lines go. Uh, and then another one halfway across that. Is everybody with me so far? <laughs> okay. This is where it starts getting really fun. Now, about this bottom left corner here, 
just lightly draw like a point first, cut, cut across here right in the middle, like another vertical line coming down there. Now from bottom here, a diagonal going up to that one, meeting that line at the top. And this top section here, just darken that in a little bit. And then this bottom corner where we started that, big nice curve. This is the front end of Lightning McQueen. This is his, one of the sides of his, the front end, which I kind of consider his cheeks. And then that kind of comes around, swoops down and touches that line. Now this top part curves down from there right to about here. I like to do, I don't know about you guys, but I like to do sound effects on the <laughs> It just kind of helps, you know. Ever since I was a kid, for some reason, I wasn't even conscious of it. People told me, you're quacking like a duck. Like, well, you know, it just helps. I don't know how. So, let's see. Right about here, we're going to show the first wheel well. But before we get too far with that, we connect that with the bottom of the front end there. Now, Lake McQueen is a race car, obviously. And I really get a kick out of this because it reminds me of my dad. My dad is a huge race car fan. At one point he owned a dragster. He used to dra drive that. Back, I'm originally from California, so we would go to racetracks a lot when I was a kid. And he had a dragster at one point. The tires on that thing were so huge. Um, oh, so this line here is the top of the closer fender. I mean, not fender. Well, this part's the fender, but this this sort of, I like to just kind of swoop things through, and you're not going to see all these lines in the final art. But keep it light, remember? And this kind of goes around like this, just to kind of give you a feeling of that shape. And then you can bring this line over, darken that line in, and then finish that circle. This is kind of a circle that blends right into that bottom line there. And then up above this bottom line, right about here, just draw that one going across. That's the bottom the side of the car. Now this is where, for me, it gets a kind, kind of tricky. Right here where this line meets, that's like the window support. Actually, window support right here. The, between the windows, between the windshield and the back windows. Wherever that meets, come come up like here and draw sort of an S curve like that. <laughs> Sound effects. And swoop that around like this. Kind of mirroring what you did in the front here, but a little bit higher up. The back end of lightning is higher up than the front. And do the same type of wheel well back here, except a little bit higher. Bring that down. Okay, how's everybody doing? I'm like, are you going too fast? Can we slow down a little bit? Okay, awesome. Wow, I'm kicking up a notch. No, I'm just kidding. Um, this is the rear tire here. Now this is, see where the wheel, the tires are gonna meet this line that we originally drew down here. The front one you can, sometimes it's fun to show them turned. His, his, his tires are kind of like his hands and feet. So if you picture, picture him riding her like a dog, you know, the front paws up here, kind of right by his face. But he can move them around. You've seen the movie, I hope. He, he moves them around like when he gestures and, you know, they're all connected by that axle underneath. And you can use those tires very expressively. And then the rear tire is back here. And if I'm not mistaken, they don't really have treads on them because they're racing slicks. So they, they're very smooth, minimal treads on them. It's like my dad's dragster, those tires, that's a different type of racing, but wow, they're slick. They're just like solid rubber. So then that line, draw that across just as a guide for where the other tire will be, which is right about here. Now, the way to draw circles at an angle like this, 
draw the part that's a complete circle, and the same thing over here, and they just connect them. You see, just making sure that lines up. So now back here, he has that big spoiler. It kind of comes up like that, and it hits this angle here, and then in the middle it flattens out because the spoiler is shaped like like this. You can see, oh, my head's not getting in the way. That happens a lot with my head. Big head. So this kind of curves around that. Actually, I'll, I'll start using the uh, graphite just to get these darker. Because we're going to have real fun with this expression. Now, what I was saying about Pixar, they call this uh, truth in materials. Because you've got something that's made of, well, in this case, fiberglass, you know, these NASCAR cars are still pretty pliable, but in general, a car, you know, you'll see, you know, come back later, I'll be doing Mater. Uh, it's a rusty old car, but I mean, you're talking about iron and metal. There are parts that can move and parts that should not move, and parts that if they move too much, it will, it will break the believability of what it's made of. So, at Pixar, what they really pioneered in this regard is saying, hey, look, as much as you can, make sure that that still feels like metal or whatever the material is it's made of. So parts of it will animate and feel very solid, and then parts will move just enough to the point where they're still believable, but you can get personality and expressions out of them. And what I like about what I get to do for merchandise or for books is kind of provide the legacy of these characters that they've created in the films. At this point, I don't get to animate, of course, on them, but what I'm getting to do is stylize these characters, these three-dimensional, solid-looking characters, and turn them into something you can draw. And it's a, it's a translation, basically. So let's see, let me just get this darkened in so it can be consistent. Actually, I'll take care of that in a minute. So now, most important part of any character are the eyes. Those are the windows to the soul. This is where you look first. You see, any kind of animated character, if it has eyes, chances are you're looking at those before you notice anything else about the character. It's like, where are the eyes looking? Are they looking at me? Where are they looking? And you get to tell, is this character a threat? Is it a friend? You know, what's going on with this character? And look at how big they are on a character like Mickey. Most of his head, you know, I mean, around his eyes. It's very important. So let's see, the center line is about here. And let's see, if we're going to make McQueen real determined, get these tops of his lids. This one, because it's closer to us, is longer. And you get a little notch here. It's like when you draw, you know, mean or an angry expression. In this case, it's determined. He's not angry, he's determined. So, loosely draw these eyes underneath those lids. And then, to really push it, it has lower lids that come up. Then you can, then you can darken in. And the trick that we do is when you put in a highlight on the eyes, usually the, the cheat or the rule of thumb is that you put the, uh, the highlights on the opposite side of the iris or pupil from where it's looking. That's why when you look at, actually, even way back, Mickey Mouse, sometimes you see that, those, what we call those pie eyes, you know, it's like a wedge cut out of a pie, like a slice. Those are actually the highlights. And the rule of thumb is generally whichever side his nose is on, those are on the opposite side. So if he's going to look, turns his head, they'll be on the other side. So let's darken in these, these pupils here. Now right in here, usually has his Rusty's sticker. And I just, for the sake of simplicity, you know, I'm not going to draw all of this detail. This is the Rusty's uh, medicated bumper ointment <laughs> logo that he has. Uh, we're going to simplify that and just draw a circle there. 
Now, the other, second most important part on his expression is his mouth. And what we're going to have here, let's see, I make him smiling. On the book cover, I have him going, whoa, because it's scary. But here, we'll draw a cheek here and a cheek here. And come down a little bit like that. Go straight across, keep that line there. See that? And then you come down from that same line, kind of forward a bit, because the shape that's on that front part kind of goes slopes forward down to the ground, not curving back in, but kind of sticking outward. I'm just going to suggest where the teeth are, because it gets too overpowering if you draw like the line going all the way across. You can, but it's kind of a trick that you see in, in comics and just animation and art, you know, where you just see kind of the corners drawn in from where the teeth are. And then a little indication of the bottom lip there, just a bit. And let's darken in this bottom line. Oh yeah, so in the first film, he had stickers. Why Sally joked and called them stickers because he didn't have actual headlights yet. He just had stickers because, like like his sponsor said, because you know on the racetrack, you know the track is always lit. <laughs> so the second film, or by the end of the first film, kind of graduated to getting real headlights installed that you can turn on. So these headlight stickers at this point, or they can be the real ones, are same shape. Kind of follow that line that we drew earlier, that swooping line from the from one uh, fender to the other one over on this side. Just kind of have a pointing, coming to a point there. And part of the headlight is orange and the rest is white. And he used to have like a, let's see, 95 logo that goes right there. Higher here, you could kind of darken in the inside of that wheel well. And another concentric oval within that one. You could just keep it simple as far as the details in the wheel. Now, this gets kind of fun back here because now we're going to deal with the side. Bring this up here, but then cut in up and over like that. This is where his exhaust pipes come out. Two of them sticking out like this. And darkening this wheel well back here. And like I said, this back here, it's going back in perspective, but it is a little bit higher than the front. But the tires and the wheels, I believe, are about the same size. So it's really, you know, the well comes up a little bit higher, and this rear end comes up higher. Same thing with the wheels back here, just kind of indicate that. Now, coming up from the bottom of this one, kind of draw a line curving way up to the top of that rear fender. And then straight across to that line there. This is gonna be the lightning bolt. It's got a big lightning bolt. Bam, like that. And then this part, let's see, how's that going? Like this cuts in with these shapes here like this. And then this is, this is tricky but fun. You're gonna draw his 95, that's his numbers. Racing number is 95 and it's I kind of figured out a way to just cheat this so it's quick to draw. Drawing that shape right along the side, it's just a sticker. And here I'll erase this a bit. I know you don't have erasers, but I'm just doing this so that you can see it better. Let's see, cut that right down the middle. Draw a line going across here, another one right here. A little cut in there. And then a hole right here, and then lightly draw there. It's kind of the opposite of what this is back here. There you have 95. Oh wait, right here too, yeah, sorry. 
that lines up with this. Everything kind of lines up with each other. It's really fun. Makes it easier. And we're almost there, folks. Almost to the checkered flag. So then we can darken in some things. This is fun. I just take the pencil and you can even use your finger if you want just to to smooth things out. These windows on the side are always kind of a light gray. So otherwise you kind of see into their brains, you know? <laughs> Cars World is amazing. What they developed, what they researched and figured out they translated everything. It's kind of an alternate universe of where we live. So when you think about it, there's a Walt Disney World in the Cars world. There's a, there's everything. There's a, well, they went to Paris. There's the Eiffel Tower. The trick is though, everything is carsified. Everything is made of cars-shaped elements. So that's what when you watch the films, just pause it, and look at it, and you'll notice. At one point, they show the Notre Dame Cathedral, and it's got axles and, and pistons and in, in place of things like gargoyles. It's it's ingenious. They just spent so much amazing effort, worked so hard to design these films. So I think we're I think we're there. How'd you guys do? <laughs> well if you ever want to do them just straight on or simple, just that's a little bit easier just like this. <laughs> it's just as fun doing it that way too. The eyes are still kind of the same though, just kind of. There. <laughs> oh wait. Okay. And there we have like oh I missed something very important. Does anybody know what I missed? Well that, but it goes right here. Ka-chow! Got it. It's a lightning bolt. It's when he flashes around. He's always impressing people. You know, ka-chow! There we go. I'll even write it here. Ka-chow! And then sign your drawing so everybody knows you did it. And there's Lightning McQueen! Woo! Give yourselves a great big hand. That's hard work. He's a tough character. Can I see your drawings? I'll hold them up. Wow! Hey, that's really awesome. You guys did great. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for coming. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And if you want, come on back at 1, and we're going to be drawing Mater, his best friend. <laughs> thanks a lot. Take care, everybody. Friends, thank you for joining us for this presentation of the Animation Academy. We hope you enjoyed the rest of your day here at the Epcot International Festival of the Arts.